It was there that he organized the East London Christian Revival Society. Out of this beginning came the Salvation Army. On one of my recent journeys, as I was gazing out my coach window, I was led into a train of thought concerning the multitudes around me. They were all living in the most open and shameless rebellion against God, without a thought for their eternal welfare. And as I looked out my window, I seemed to see them all, millions of people, all given up to their pleasures and their vanities. And while my mind was thus engaged, I had a vision. I saw a dark and stormy ocean. Above it, the black clouds hung heavily. Lightning flashed and loud thunder rolled. The winds moaned and the waves, they rose and foamed and towered and broke. And in that dark ocean, I thought I saw myriads of lost, poor human beings plunging and floating and shouting and shrieking and struggling and cursing and drowning. And as they shouted and screamed, some rose and shrieked again, and then some sank to rise no more. Now out of this dark ocean, I saw a mighty rock rising up with its summit reaching high above the black clouds. And all around the base of this rock, I saw a vast platform. Now, those who were on this platform were those who had been saved and been rescued from those dangerous waters. Now, the occupants on this platform were of a very mixed company. They were all divided into different sets and cliques, and they all occupied themselves in different pleasures and employments. Very few of them seemed to make it their business to get the drowning people out of the sea. While all of them had one time or another been saved from that dangerous ocean, they seemed to have forgotten all about it, for they seemed to have no care for the drowning creatures right before their very eyes. Instead, they spent all their time amusing themselves with entertainment of various kinds. None of them hearing the voice of that wonderful being who had himself saved them from the dangerous waters, who was now calling to them from the sea, asking them to come and help him save those still drowning. But what puzzled me even more was that these people used to meet together and get up as high upon the rock as possible and then looking towards the mainland where they thought that great being was and they would call out to him and say, come to us, come help us feel more happy and more secure upon the rock. When all the while he was down by those drowning creatures in the waters, trying to drag them out and save them, his arms around them and looking up to those upon the rock, crying out to them, oh, but all in vain, his voice, all hoarse from calling, come to me, come help me save them. My friends in Christ, you who are saved are on the rock. Christ is calling you to go and reach the lost. Will you lay aside your pride and all this selfish love that have kept you back for so long? Will you go?